So ladies and gentlemen, um, on the principle of uh, global competitiveness, there is no one better to speak about global competitiveness and the importance of global competitiveness and national competitiveness than Mr. Chad Evans, who is here from Washington, D.C. Thank you, Chad, for being here. Uh, and I'd like, uh, Chad is also part, uh, he's uh, Vice President of the U.S. Council on Competitiveness, so his speech will cover both the global and the national uh, 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 perspective of global competitiveness. Chad Evans, please. Ashraf, I first just want to thank you, and I want to thank Nancy and the entire Global Trade Matters team um, for welcoming me to Egypt and for your superb hospitality. It's been a great whirlwind, 48 or 72 hours, but as you said in your opening remarks, which I have to admit, I think you stole my, most of my speech, so I hate to be repetitive for the group here, but I, I do want to thank you very sincerely. And I want to say good morning to everyone here. Thank you for being with us. Um, it's really my pleasure to be here um, representing and to sharing my views and those of my organization, the U.S. Council on Competitiveness, as well as the Global Federation of Competitiveness Councils, and to talk about competitiveness. And we define competitiveness very succinctly. It's a nation's ability to use its human capital and natural resources productively to make goods and services that succeed in the global marketplace. Competitiveness is also an outcome of a complex set of institutions policies and factors that drive productivity in a country, the fundamental source we contend of long-term growth and prosperity. And we define prosperity as a rising living standard for all citizens. And ultimately, competitiveness is not simply about the competitive edge of one nation over another, one firm over another, or one worker over another. In the long run, the competitiveness challenges between the past and the future and between a country's economic growth and stagnation. A couple of decades ago, the competitiveness conversation, the debate around what is competitiveness, really revolved around a handful of countries and economic powerhouses and a few up-and-comers. But what is indisputable today is the fact that the competitiveness landscape has transformed dramatically. It's now characterized by hundreds of trading nations and regions, not dozens, both traditional economic powerhouses that remain at the cutting edge and a wide array of emerging and disruptive asymmetrical competitors. The 20th century models of mass production and services are gone. We find ourselves in the midst of a deep and ever accelerating transition to a world order of production. Some are calling this the fourth industrial revolution. This is an era of deep turbulence transition and transformation, and we are finding ourselves grappling with the new realities of a global economy undergoing rapid and deep technological change. All nations are operating on a truly global terrain of economic and an enormous economic complexity. Borderless production characterizes the world economy today, with the global value chains of multinationals alone now accounting for nearly 80% of all global trade. We live in a world in which the ability to manufacture high-tech goods and services is widely diffused. The swelling global labor pool has created an unprecedented competition for the world's work, and it is easier every day to ship that work around the world in bits and bytes. Once dominated by advanced economies, the global competitive playing field is ever more accessible to all economies, including the developing world. Digital networks provide pathways to the world's businesses, supply chains, markets, and jobs. The most important assets for production, knowledge, technology, capital, skills, these are all globally fungible, mobile, and countries around the world have access to all of these resources. 24-hour, seven days a week global labor arbitrage enables workers and workforces to link employers, to link to employers and to labor markets around the world. And this era presents tremendous opportunities for rapid economic gains. For example, 20 years ago, developing countries would have competed on natural resources or commodity-based goods, slowly working their way up the economic development curve. 
But that economic development curve has been shattered irrevocably. Today, many developing countries are evolving rapidly from resource and commodity-based labor economies to competitive knowledge and skills-based economies. Everyone, everywhere, is competing for everything, for product and service markets, for foreign direct investment, for digitized work, and for the operation of global business enterprises. But many are not following the same rules, often creating an asymmetrical playing field. At the same time that seismic shifts have disrupted the competitive landscape, we are find ourselves living in the midst of four great colliding and converging revolutions in technology and science. A new age of unprecedented knowledge, unparalleled technological power, and inconceivable innovation is unfolding before our very eyes. The digital, biotechnology, nanotechnology, and cognitive revolutions are rewriting the rules of production and services in digital code, genetic code, atomic code, and neural code in ways we could not even imagine a decade ago. For example, nanotechnology is here. It has reached the $1 trillion market milestone. We have also passed major inflection points in biotechnology. The cost of DNA sequencing has fallen through the floor driving the biotech business not only from personalized medicine and agriculture, but now to energy and advanced materials. And the next stage of the digital revolution is unfolding as fast and as game-changing as the first. Here, the physical world and the virtual world are converging across numerous dimensions through sensors, networks, and a tsunami of data. We are connecting people and things on a scale once unimaginable. The Internet of Things is passé, as the Internet of Everything stretches across a multitude of human endeavors. All human activities that are measured are being quantitatively characterized. Big data are yielding unprecedented levels of business insight and driving a revolution in research as computational fields develop exponentially in biology, physics, chemistry, economics, medicine, and finance, and the list goes on. Mobile devices are proliferating globally, becoming the emerging platform for services delivery. Social media have become a disruptive force. At the same time, a flood of new advanced manufacturing technologies is providing new capabilities with potentially transformational technical and productivity impacts for the making of things. Couple smart manufacturing with new classes of product technologies from flexible electronics, to vast applications for revolutionary fibers and textiles, and you begin to see the incredible opportunities for new innovation, for new businesses, and new industrial capacity. This unfolding age of interplay between bits and atoms is a perfect storm, an intersection of challenge and opportunity with profound implications for innovation and competitiveness. We will begin to manage our resources, production, services, work, and our lives in vastly in different ways, leading to a revolution in productivity. And we will begin to see the birth of many new companies and new industries. And existing companies, existing industries, are already transforming, including agriculture, which remains a mainstay of Egypt's economy. Imagine capturing what every farmer knows in bits and bites. Every acre, every crop, every piece of soil, every inch of rain or snow or frost, every temperature variation, capturing every operation and maintenance on every tractor, every tiller, every cedar, every spreader, having insight on the movement of every single hen or heifer. Through wireless sensors and new services, we begin to get a clearer picture of agriculture than has ever existed before in the history of humankind. We will develop further the ability to optimize the entire farming cycle, making large improvements in crop management at scales never dreamed of. From square meter farming to better management of agricultural resources at the regional and national level. And beyond the farm and field, unprecedented insight will benefit actors across the entire agricultural supply chain, from researchers to equipment producers to seed and fertilizer company, companies to insurers, to economists and financiers. 
Monsanto and Deere are already becoming software and data companies. And with its water challenges, this region can serve as a global test bed for smart sensors, farming, and water use optimization. And if all of this weren't enough, coming at a time when there is global recognition that competitiveness hinges on innovation, something very remarkable, something extremely powerful is happening right before our eyes. A huge opportunity exists to grow the ranks of innovators and entrepreneurs around the world. New innovation ecosystems are emerging outside the traditional systems and institutions of research and innovation. These new systems are supporting independent innovators and stretch across ideation and invention, financing, manufacturing, and partnership brokering. Open innovation platforms are providing the places, they're providing the processes that connect innovation seekers with problem solvers. And dozens of these platforms have emerged across the world. And corporations are using them now, using them today, to enable innovation in areas beyond their own expertise, to attract and retain new important innovative ideas. They're also using these platforms to reduce the risk of their own companies by turning potential competitors into collaborators. And they may begin to see faster monetization of value because large companies can now begin to put their manufacturing, distribution, and marketing behind innovations and innovators that lack them. One such platform, Nine Sigma, already has two million solution providers. And Nine Sigma clients are already indicating that the solutions they're receiving from the platform are coming from sources they were not expecting. We are also seeing the democratization of the financing for innovation, embodied in global, web-based, crowdfunding sites such as Kickstarter, EquityNet, Crowdfunder, where millions of people are backing tens of thousands of projects. And the impact is real. The impact is here today. The tiny startup company, Oculus Virtual Reality, used Kickstarter to raise $2.4 million from 10,000 people to fund the development of their virtual reality headset. Facebook acquired Oculus for $2 billion, and its Rift virtual reality headset is now shipping across the world. The startup, Pebble Technology Corporation, really started by a couple of entrepreneurs and tinkerers, used Kickstarter to raise $10 million in an initial round and in just one month to develop its smartwatch. And about two years ago, it had sold over one million units. And just last year, it raised an additional $20 million on Kickstarter from 75,000 backers for a second generation watch. And today, we're already seeing over 1,000 apps that are being developed for the Pebble watch off of its software development kit. Pebble was a game changer, disrupting the space ahead of the incumbent players like Google and Apple. Six years ago, two unemployed IT workers came up with an idea, a new idea for instant messaging, and collaborated with an iPhone developer that they found from, if you can believe it, a site called rentacoder.com. And then they convinced five friends to give them $250,000 to launch an app called WhatsApp. Now, they've attracted one billion users globally, and they're the world's largest instant messaging service. And they were acquired by Facebook for $20 billion. And ironically, both of the two WhatsApp developers were turned down for jobs by Facebook just years prior. So these two independent in innovators disrupted the instant messaging business. And they also disrupted the business of giant telecom providers worldwide.